welcome to Illustrator Jones. Um, last video I inked this drawing up. If you wonder what happened there, it's it's still under there. Just like protect it with a bit of card so that it doesn't get damaged and marked by my mucky hands. Anyway, I'm going to colour it in with watercolours. So these are the Copeman, Windsor and Newton Copeman watercolours I use. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. So here we go. Ah, forgot to tell you. Remember those? I told you that they're full of ink when you buy them, but I use them. I filled it up with water and uh, use it as a, a brush pen. Pentel do make brush pens themselves, but they're they're not very good. I don't find them very good at all. So. I used these filled back up with water. So um, there are videos on YouTube, uh, I think, on how to do that. I could show you later on if I remember to do it. So, but anyway, that's what I'm using that one. Where to start? Where to start? So I'm going to. Which blue shall I use? I think I might use this one. Can't remember what it's called now. Uh, <laughs> oh, I can't remember now. What's that called? Has it got it written on it? It has. It's a ooh, phalo blue. But that's a Roni uh, paint. That one. That one isn't actually Windsor and Newton. Anyway. It's lovely blue though, really nice. So you can just squeeze these, a bit of water comes out. And then you can... There you go. Of course you can use these normal brushes. Don't have to use these. Uh, so where to start is the problem. You'll see how nervous I am about laying colour down on these. I'm tentative is the word. There goes my dog again, barking at birds. Um, I always find it scary just to start a drawing, uh, especially the colouring in bit. You don't want to overdo it, you don't want to underdo it. You know, you don't want it looking all washed out and drab. But then you don't want it looking, you know, too dark a colour where you've absolutely ruined the drawing altogether. So I'm all I'm always a little bit tentative. You, uh, you might see uh, through these drawings that I, ha I have a piece of paper on a, a board on a clipboard, and I'll test out the paints to see how dark, uh, how thin they are. You know, because um, I last thing I want to do is go too dark and not be able to pull it back. If you go light then you can add dark to it so that you know you can always work from light to dark which is what you're supposed to do I, so i was told in college but um i always get very worried and scared about this bit it usually works out all right though it's just trust your instincts i suppose you know and don't forget your training from college <laughs> if you've been to college oh dear So just adding all the shadows to the clouds, but you'll notice that later on it's not it's not enough. It's too light. It blends too too much in with the um, with the sky. It's meant to be a nighttime scene, and uh, you know it's it's very bright for a nighttime scene. <laughs> so we'll have to change that later on, obviously. But like I said, you work from light to dark, then you're okay. You've got a bit of a safety net. In this bit, you're going to see me um, show you what I fill my pens up with. It's um, Windsor & Newton Calligraphy Ink. It's waterproof. Um, I, I put that in, in those pens, yeah, there we go, in the reservoir, it's just to refill them. You can use them over and over again. You can buy the, the reservoirs again if you want to. You don't have to do this. 
but there is a way of injecting the uh, ink back in the pen and you get a lot of life out of these pens they're really well made by Pentel they're, you know they're they're a lot a lot better than their um, brush pens that they sell but um, yeah that's the ink Windsor and Newton calligraphy ink I think I, I buy it on in a place called cult pens that seems to be the cheapest place to buy them there you go I buy syringes um, from Amazon and of course this is the needle that goes on the end of the, the syringe but it's got a flat head on it it's not not got a sharp point it's just a tube and of course you put that on the end of your syringe suck up the ink and then uh, inject it back into the pen uh, you, you just pull the gubbins out of the pen you do and then fill it up and then put the gubbins back in don't overfill it otherwise you get it squirting all over you <laughs> as, as i discovered <laughs> Ruined a jumper doing that, covered in ink. <laughs> anyway, it just prolongs the life of the pen. Or do what I've just done on this pen, particular pen, is um, I filled it with water and used it as a brush pen. So they're very versatile, these ones, and you can buy them on Amazon. I can't remember how much they are. I think they're under a tenner. They're not, they're not hugely expensive, but they last a long time. The, the the actual nylon hair of the brush is very good. Pentel do make another Japanese brush pen, but um, I find that the uh, brush is too big. These are just the right size for inking up on an A5, and you can get a finer brush as well, which is slightly fine. There's not a huge amount uh, of difference in it. But when I'm drawing all these, I like to put in all the shadows first and then add the colour on top of the blue. have tried it the other way around and it doesn't work as well. Like, you know, you might find it totally different, but yeah. I find it um, better to add all the shadows and then the colour on top of the blue. So I'm gonna put the shadows in, in the little town behind now. Again, I'm being tentative as how much colour I'm putting down. So I'm using a thin wash to add all the shadows in the bits that are not facing the moon. And then later on, I will add more colour just to, you know, to make it stand out a bit more. Because once I've done the robot and the little boy, you can see then afterwards how f how far you can make how dark you can make the little town behind without it overpowering the drawing. Oh, I'm showing I'm showing you there the other type of pen, which is the finer one, but uh, it's a very little difference in it. There is a slight difference. This is slightly uh, thinner, but um, there you go. Look, I'm adding more. Uh, darker blue now just to, because I think I can get away with a little bit being a little bit darker but I do like this bit of the drawing actually I, you know I feel quite I'm all right doing this it's just when you start and you've got a, a nice picture and you think oh well I've got to remember what Bill making stuff says it's only a sketchbook just don't worry about it like I said before I normally do this in front of the telly Oh, I'm, I'm, air dry, I'm drying it with the air dryer now. As you can see. What it, it, why I'm, I'm showing you the page um, next to it is because uh, I put a little bit too much water on and it's gone through slightly to the next page. So I've dried it out. This is me testing out my blues now. What kind of blue am I going to use on the robot? I, can't, I don't want to use the same blue as the background because that, that's quite a cool blue. So I think I've... Oh, dear me, what's... I forgot what the blue is called now. <laughs> anyway, it's a it's a bit of a warmer blue. It's got a little bit more purple in it, this one. Oh, I, can't, I can't remember what it is. And it's sticking all the shadows in again. You, I do have to think very carefully when I do this. Sometimes if I stop thinking and I start thinking of other things, 
I'll make mistakes and I'll uh, I'll I'll ruin the drawing. So I go, you, I have to. It's me, you know. You you might not have to. <laughs> it's just it's not being that clever. I have to really concentrate. <laughs> But for some people, it comes very, very natural. You know, they just oh, they can they do whatever they want. There's a there's a lady on YouTube called um, oh, I've forgotten her name now. But she's oh, 26. This lady, um, Nerd Forge. That's what the channel is called, Nerd Forge. What a talented lady! <laughs> Dear me, she's brilliant. And she can put her hand to almost anything, you know. Anyway, we all have our bits that we, you know, we feel that we can do. But she's got lots of, you know, talent. It's incredible. Worth a watch, that Nerdforge, so. <laughs> I've just remembered what the blue is. I think it's Phalo Blue. Phalo Blue. And it's done. It's not spelt spelt with an F. I think it's P H. <laughs> yeah, F Phalo Blue. It's. Um, I always used to thought it was spelt with a T H, but never mind. There's me testing the the colours again. What I'm going to use. It's a skin uh, tone I've used, which is I think it's bright red I use, and raw sienna mixed uh, into a thin wash, and then I, I that's what I use mostly for for um, skin tone. Now I'm trying to figure out what colour shall I do the robot. Because the background is blue, yellow will pop off really nicely. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try little bits with yellow. I'm not gonna do the whole thing in a wash, I'm just picking out little sections that might look nice in a wash. If it doesn't work, you know I can I can go to something else, can't I? But it seems to be working, so I'm carrying on with the yellow. I like the yellow. Plus the fact is that the other drawing I did originally, the the robots are yellow, so... I'm going mad now. Everything's yellow. Ooh, yeah, he's hard. yeah everything's yellow. But it does, it does pop off the page after a while. I don't know where he's going to up. Testing more colour. Ah, he's seen what red to use now. I just said he's seeing. What? It's me. <laughs> it's not another person, Chris. Talking to, talking about myself in the third person here. <laughs> Wally. Yeah, just trying to figure out what red will work on the blue. Uh, it's quite a, a dark red. It's not the bright red again. It's a it's a darker red. Um, is it a lizard crimson? I don't know why I'm asking you that, because you didn't do the painting. <laughs> anyway, if you're watching this and sitting there rubbing your head going, why am I bothering watching this rubbish? I am very grateful that you've watched any of it, to be honest. But, uh, yeah. This is the first time I'm doing a voiceover. Um, normally, on the other uh, tour of my sketchbook, I had done the voice uh, over as I was going through the book. But this time I'm um, trying to do it afterward, so that I can speed up the drawings. And my voice doesn't sound like a chipmunk. <laughs> because, although now i found out that I can separate the uh, the dialogue from the um, the audio file from the video, which is, which is a really good... If you're wondering what I use for editing, my son uh, has uh, shown me this uh, software called Wondershare Filmora. It's free. Would you believe it's free to use? But you can, you can. Um, uh, we, we've bought a, a, um, a license for it. You know, for good. I think it was about. I'm not sure what you said. It was about eighty pound. I think it was. But you can do some of it for free. But um, this is. Uh, it's brilliant. It really is easy to use. And I've used a few of these, and I've just found them totally frustrating. But this one, almost instantly, had a, um, a great. Not a great video. <laughs> Uh, again, a little bit ahead of yourself there, boy. Um, a video that was easy to put together, you know, and sound effects and music and 
zooming in and out and adding little transitions between the videos. Brilliant. Uh, Wondershare Filmora, it's called. I can't recommend it enough. It's absolutely brilliant. Putting all the flames in now in his rocket. I hope this doesn't offend some people who are um, interested <laughs> in pollution. It's, it's, it's a non-pollutive rocket. It doesn't pollute anything. It's just uh, it's as clean as fuel you've ever, ever seen. The little boys invented it all. <laughs> it's not. It's just a rocket. Anyway, with all that's going on in the world and all the pollution, you think you'd, you'd, you'd draw a a rocket robot with a eco-friendly fuel and emissions. Come on, he's clever enough to build a, ro a, a robot rocket in his bedroom and not kill himself. You know what? You're asking a bit much for him to build one with eco-friendly fuel. <laughs> He just does it with whatever he can get his hands on. So I did a bit of yellow, more uh, a, a very uh, a, a richer yellow now, so that it you know makes him pop off the page a lot more. So and I've also added the red so that your eyes are uh, attract you know drawn to those bits straight away in the drawing. Doing the little boy's hair now. Brown. I just used brown. I think it's uh, raw umber. I can't remember now. I, as, as you may have noticed, I'm not very um, up on the names of paints. I, I can never remember them. It's like playing chords on the guitar. I, I, I know a lot of chords on the guitar and then I forget what they're called after a while. Memory like a sieve. I hope you're enjoying the, uh, the, the oh, lovely purple. Not so lovely purple. I ruined that purple then by putting it in the red. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying the video. So it's, um, as I said before, it's my first time doing these. And as I said before as well, I think, um, I, I used to love watching uh, people draw on telly when I was a kid in the 70s and 80s. And anything come up on the telly with art or painting, I think it was Al Alin Alwyn Crawshaw. I don't know if anybody remembers him. I used to watch him uh, do his watercolor painting, but it was never anything like this. <laughs> it was never anything, it was, you know, scenes, serious stuff, boats, buildings, trees. We are painting. We are proper artists. I'm not a proper artist. <laughs> it's not barely an illustrator. <laughs> Oh dear. Who are you kidding, Chris? Not me, that's for sure. I right, see, bit bit of bright red now, just to make it stand out a bit more. Give it a bit more depth, not so flattened, plain. It's getting there slowly. What, 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 I don't know what colour that was. Oh, it's light blue again. Oh, air dryer. Yeah, that's the only problem with this book. It's not a brilliant book. I got it from Wilkinson's years ago. And I've been filling it up. And if you overwet the page, it will go through to the net, you know, to the, the image behind. You can dry it out and stop it, you know. You can't overwork this paper. So the, 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 the next book, I think it, is it a Windsor & Newton? I can't remember. I do use a lot of Windsor & Newton stuff. I find it quite good. It is a bit more expensive than what you've got, uh, you know, what you can buy cheap. I tell you what, not, well, I'm not going to say don't buy it. You might want to buy it and you might think it's wonderful, but I have bought um, art books from, oh, Tiger. Is it, there's a shop called Tiger in town, in, com in here. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, those books are rubbish. For me, they are. It may not be for you. They may be brilliant for you, but they, uh, yeah, they don't last very long. They all fall apart. The paper's not very good, and works do a line of sketchbooks and paper in there, which are. 
I've used before, tried to, you know, but it's just not very good. So I'm back to the Posca pen now. I'm adding all the highlights, and which really makes the drawing pop when you put all this on. It makes it look, you know, feel shiny and it gives it some life. These are brilliant. These are thankfully my daughter told me about these. Doesn't doesn't tell me anything, but says, "Oh, I got some pens that do that." I said, "I could I could do with a pen that you know had white in it, and you could add it." Oh, I've got some of those. I said, "What? Well, what do you mean you've got some?" And she brings down a stack full of Posca pens, all different sizes. She's had upstairs. <laughs> it's like, "Oh, well, why didn't you tell me?" <laughs> anyway, I had to go out. I borrowed some of hers for a little while, and then I I, I bought my own. But every time I go into um, Hobbycraft, for three quid I go in and I buy another Posca pen. I think it's an M1, is it? Uh, yeah, is it not, it's not an M3, no. That's the size of the nib. Anyway, it's a, it's a fine version. They do lead, need a lot of shaking, though, to loosen up the ink inside. They have a ball bearing inside and you can hear it rattling. If you do it outside when you... I, I, some, I take my bag everywhere with me drawing. I've got a bag with all my drawing stuff in it. And everywhere I go, in the car or even on holiday, it comes with me. I go to town shopping and I'll, I'll bring it with me just in case I get, end up sitting somewhere waiting for people. And i got something to do. And you're sitting there shaking this pen. Ka-ching, 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 ka-ching. <laughs> people looking at you go, what the heck is he doing? <laughs> It's a laugh, isn't it? Yes, I'm. I'm. I. I, I did some yellow on the on the uh, the clouds and things, and and didn't like it. So I'm adding the white now to try and, on, on the roofs of the houses to try and get rid of uh, that little bit of yellow hint I put on, which is great because you can do that, and also to go over the black line. Of the hills behind, the po the the white isn't completely opaque. You c you can see through it slightly, and you can still see the black line. But it's what it's done is fainted the black line, made it um, paler. So you it drops it into the background, makes it doesn't make it so pronounced. I <laughs> oh, I, uh, I tell you what he's doing now. I said it again. I talked about myself in the third person. <laughs> I'm adding more dark to the sky because it's not dark enough and it's meant to be night time. So I'm adding more um, uh, blue. Do you know what? I think I've got the wrong... I think that's phthalo blue, isn't it? I think the other one wasn't... Um... Oh, I can't. See, I'm useless at remembering colours. Don't listen to me about the colours, because I think I've just led you up the garden path there. Anyway, it's it's a dark, it's I'm using more pigment on the brush, so it'll make him pop out a lot more now. But like I said earlier in the in the video, you can uh, do this after you've done all the other bits. Instead of doing it all first and then finding out you've got a you know, a, a, it's more difficult then to pull from from dark to light, it's best to do it from light to dark. So here I'm showing you um, that I didn't show it on film, I didn't record this bit, uh, what I'd done. I'd, I'd gone in and added a bit more ink to the drawing, uh, highlighted the clouds a little bit around the back end so that they stood out a little bit more. Uh, put ink on the actual robot and the little boy because when you do a wash over ink it does make the ink uh, go a little bit dull so I like to go back in and just quickly go over it uh, and you know and, and make it stand out a little bit more the black ink that is um, and I've put a little bit of cross hatching on the buildings below just to darken them up slightly and I put Posca pen stars on the uh, in the background on in the sky so uh, yeah there you go I'm showing you now what, what I've added that ink you see made it darker made it stand out a bit more makes it pop a little bit 
But yes, yeah, it turned out alright. I should have shown you that, that bit, but then again, it basically was the same drawing as, as before, but it's just a little slightly darker, a bit more pronounced. Thank you ever so much for watching my video. If you like it, please leave a like, um, a thumbs up, as they say, and subscribe to my channel if you if you like to to see more content and if you've got any uh, suggestions please let me know in the in the um, the text below and I hopefully will see you again <laughs>